On November 27th of 2022, at 11.30 p.m. local time, the first eruption of the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii in 38 years began. This eruption began with an explosive event as the intruding magma interacted with the groundwater in the summit caldera, which flashed to steam and produced a series of explosions. Lava soon was ejected onto the surface within Mauna Loa's caldera via a lengthy fissure, sending several fountains of lava as high as 100 feet or 30 meters into the sky. In the next few hours, the fissure propagated in both directions, causing a larger and larger section of the caldera to be filled with lava. Before I continue in my coverage and analysis of the eruption, I need to cover the elephant in the room. At the present, the ongoing eruption is completely confined to Mauna Loa's summit caldera. Lava is not currently flowing down the flanks of the volcano, although this could change with very little warning, so the information contained in this video might become quickly outdated. For context, the Mauna Loa volcano is Hawaii's largest and second tallest active volcano on the Big Island, composing 51% of the island's landmass. Although eruptions from Mauna Loa can have minor explosive components, they are almost completely effusive, where long-distance and voluminous lava flows and volcanic gases represent the volcano's main hazards in what is known as a Hawaiian eruption, unlike more destructive eruptions from explosive volcanoes such as Mount St. Helens. As shown by the dark black lava flows visible from satellite, Mauna Loa's eruptions can send lava flows in addition to the caldera to one or more of four sectors in association with two rift zones. These two rift zones represent areas where fissures or intrusions of magma can propagate, causing lava to emerge away from the summit region closer to populated areas. Since more than 50,000 people live on Mauna Loa's flanks, any lava which travels outside of the caldera is likely to cause significant destruction. A best case scenario is that lava remains inside the caldera, which although it is early, appears to be what is currently ongoing. If lava erupted from the southwest rift zone created a breakout towards the west, it would most likely take only a few hours for lava to reach populated areas and eventually the ocean. If this were to occur, not much could be done to impede the movement of lava. On the other hand, if a breakout occurred to the southeast, it would take several days to weeks for a flow to reach populated areas. Lava could also flow to the north-northwest, which would also take days to weeks to reach population centers. Although any flank eruption would be destructive, a worst-case scenario would occur if a lava flow breakout flowed towards the east in the direction of the city of Hilo. More than 40,000 people live in this area, and as shown by eruptions in 1881 and 1984, which were close calls, the city could face significant destruction. However, if this were to occur, lava flows in that sector generally take the longest amount of time to reach populated areas, taking anywhere from weeks to several months. Therefore, in the event of this worst-case scenario, there would be plenty of time to construct lava flow barriers and perform diversionary attempts on the advancing molten rock. If evacuations do occur, you might be wondering what areas would be mostly safe from advancing lava flows. Three safe areas would be the northwest section of the island, in the vicinity of Kailua Kona on the flanks of the Hualalai volcano, and the northern flanks of the Mauna Kea volcano. Thanks for watching, and please stay safe. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, if you wish to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on this channel's Patreon page.